Hello. So as the title of the video would suggest, I've been doing a lot of decluttering, not just with plants, but it's kind of been like my whole house has been happening over the last two months. I've been on this home kick trying to just get rid of everything that, that has just kind of been sitting here since I moved in. I lived in this house for like three years and there's a lot, there's a lot of corners of the house that has had a lot of untouched things so I've been I've been focused a lot on just cleaning and reorganizing and moving things around and it's been really good for me so this past weekend Charmaine and I did a Facebook plant purge it started because I decided it was time to kind of unload some of my forgetty eye seedlings which were the first plants that I had ever pollinated and grown from seed myself so I've been holding on to them for a really long time but as they're getting into like full size plants I really needed that space back and I don't need 20 forgetty eyes as much as I love these plants and they'll always be very special to me I it was time to let some go so here are all the plants that I sold in the purge all but one one just doesn't fit in the box so I thought I'd go through and show you what I what I decided to declutter as we're gearing up to spring I think a lot of us are kind of getting into the mood of where you want to just kind of let go of some plants that no longer bring you a lot of joy and just pass them on to the next person and also next weekend is the uh, tropicals plants pop up at Nostra Tropicals so while I only imported one plant you never know what you're gonna see at the pop-up and I also have a bin of Amanda plants that like they're still in a bin I don't have space in any of my greenhouses for it so this didn't do a ton in freeing up space but it did help so yeah I'm just gonna show you what the plants are and we can kind of collectively say goodbye to these seedlings together so I was actually really pleasantly surprised that there was a good amount of interest in the forgetty eyes I really didn't think that people really cared about forgetty eyes anymore and I had mentally prepared myself that like there wasn't gonna be a lot of interest and not all of them would sell and I prepare myself that's like it's fine <laughs> I you know they're cute they're not for everyone but I was actually really surprised that all of them sold and there was still additional interest so um, I sold another one on top that I hadn't originally pulled for the sale so in total I sold six of my forgetty eye seedlings so I'm just gonna pull them out one by one and show you oh they're so cute what have I done so I've been growing half of the seedlings in soil, half of them in pond, just for my like kind of very casual observation to see which substrate would grow the seedlings better. And it wasn't like a totally scientific thing either because I, I would try my best to separate the seedlings by size. So some big ones went into soil, some big ones went, went into pond, but obviously they're not super uniform. And a lot of the size differences can kind of be put down to some seedlings having stronger genetics, just stronger specimens in general. So it's, let's just take all this with a grain of salt. But I, in, in my findings, pond grew the seedlings a little bit stronger. So the first one I'm going to show you are the soil ones. So this is the first one in soil. So just a little bit of background on this forgetty eye because there are so many forms of forgetty eyes out there or forms. It's arguable that the very silver forgetty eyes are not pure forgetty eyes and they are probably they have like magnificum or crystalline mixed into them but they are fully peltate and therefore are called forgetty eyes but you'll see like if you if you ever order forgetty eye small plants from like equigenera or equiflora or tropicals plants you'll notice that they are super super variable which kind of um suggests that there are it's like there's there's a wider gene pool in there than than them being pure forgetty eyes if that makes sense so this one seed parent is my forgetty eye let me go grab her actually so this is mom she's not very big as you can see this is the biggest leaf this one is the newest leaf no i actually this one is the newest leaf i just popped this one out that's what she looks like so she when I imported her, I imported her from Equigenera like I don't know how long, almost two years ago. She was she was actually quite a bit smaller than this, like the largest leaf was like this big and it was already in flower so I was like well I might as well just, just try pollinating her and it took but it really messed her up like she was too young to be producing berries but she did and she also had like three growth points as well so it, it took a really long time for her to recover from giving birth to children but she's looking a lot better now like she's sizing up and she's forming like really nice leaves they're not wonky she's really really steady grower she's in flower oh my gosh it smells so good forgetting flowers just 
This is my favorite fragrance. There are a few fragrances on this earth that are like, they just make me die and go to heaven. So one is rosemary, um, the other one is sage, and forget AI flowers is the third one. It's so like warm, floral, spicy, just in the best way. So that's her. You can see that she's quite dark and the silver on her is very minimal. It's super, super thin and they kind of just like fade out. When I first got her, she was fully green. Like she did not have any silver on her. After she gave birth to berries is when the silver started to come out, which was really interesting. So that's the seed parent. The pollen parent is my friend JR's dark form and what I consider true dark form for Giddy Eye. So it's all green, all dark. Any visible veining is very like lime green. There's no silver whatsoever. So imagine if this silver was was gone and you only had like a bit of green in the veins. That's what his looks like. Very bullied. So the children ended up looking like a very good mix of the two plants. So like this one is almost all green. Any silver is very, very minimal. The newest leaf, like the, the veins are quite, quite limey. And then there's like a little bit of silver that comes out at the bottom. So that's the first one. This is the second one. And when I tell you, this is the leaf where I was like, if they don't sell, it's okay because I get to keep this leaf. This leaf is the most adorable forget eye leaf ever. It's so round at the top. It's so symmetrical, but it's also super bully. Like if I lift it here, you can see, like look how bumpy it is. I was, I was staring at it in the box and I was like, why did I pull that plant? I'm sure whoever got it will appreciate it as much as I would. This one actually grew quite well in soil. So I would say like between soil and pond, it's not a huge difference. So if you're growing baby anthuriums, it's probably just down to your personal preference and what you feel the most comfortable growing your plants in, your watering habits and things like that. I probably will continue to grow anthuriums in both. As like a quick aside on substrates for anthuriums, I would probably say the three substrates I like the most currently and for the foreseeable future are the choose upon like my pond mix, which is mixed with perlite and orchiata, tree fern fiber, especially mixed with like a lot of perlite or pond to kind of aerate it, but also make it a little bit cheaper. And as a third option, a mixture of soil and tree fern fiber. That mixture has been really pleasantly surprising to me how much the plants love to root in that. It's like a little bit airier and fluffier than soil because the tree fern fiber holds that structure really well, but also it's cheaper than using pure tree fern fiber as well because tree fern fiber, at least for me, is super, super expensive. This is in like an aeroid mix soil. So that's number two. <laughs> We're only at number two. Uh, number three, this guy has a bit of a wonky leaf. This one has like almost no silver on it. If I go really, really close up, you can see how thin that silver is, is just like hairline silver. An older leaf, nice and bully. Once again, like almost no silver. It's so cute. One more in soil. This one actually pulled after the sale because there's someone who missed out on the plant and wanted to get one. So Liz, if you're watching, this one is yours. So this is the last one I pulled. I, I left it behind because I was trying to pull like bigger seedlings. This one is a little bit smaller, but it's really cute because all the leaves are quite narrow and elongated like so this is the newest leaf it's actually about to pop a new one even the really really small ones are quite narrow right i really actually really like this one i actually need to repot this one for her because i was telling her the roots are like coming out the bottom and i didn't want to give it to her with like withered roots but also she was planning to grow it in pond so i'll probably transition this to pond before i bring it to the pop-up which is where we're going to hand off all the perch plants um but i can't repot stuff right now just because you can see like my hands are like oh no you can't see it on this one my hands are so messed up right now i actually have a pretty bad cut like these are injuries <laughs> i believe it or not i got it when i was cleaning so off topic but a quick psa because i certainly didn't know you know those like drain covers that you put over your 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 drains to like catch hair and stuff like that it's like it's like a metal disc with like a mesh in the middle i did not know how freaking sharp those were so i picked one up and i was scrubbing it for like mildew and stuff and i like grazed like it basically like 
went like this with the sponge and when I tell you like it gouged my fingers so deep I was just like if you didn't know those things are freaking sharp because they're cheap right so either um, you get a good quality one I guess it's not like you know freshly chopped metal with no finishing or sanding on the edges or just be very careful or sand it yourself yeah all that to say i need to repot her plant <sighs> i'm finding it really hard to focus you can't tell last two are pond this is one of the pond ones i it didn't necessarily need a repot because these are in no drainage so it didn't have like roots coming out the bottom but it had so much stem kind of like just dangling around the top like very similar to how this one is like you can see how much stem is exposed and there's like roots flying around so it's very similar to that it wasn't super stable so I just kind of put this little like pot extension collar around it so it's really just um, the the plastic sheets that I use for lazy moss poles cut with a little slit to kind of hook onto each other I'll probably show you how I do that in a future repot but I think Charmaine must have a repot video somewhere where she does that but it's really handy just when you don't need to repot but you need to kind of expose some stem it's very similar to like when you top dress with sphagnum moss and kind of just pile the moss around but this is really useful for pond plants so back to the plant uh, this is the newest leaf this one is very nice and bully as well so bumpy and so cute it's one of the biggest seedlings I had it's not the biggest one I actually held one of the biggest ones back for myself but it's one of the bigger ones for sure and then the last one this one is so cute also in the same situation so with like a little collar around the top so this is probably good to grow in here for the next I don't know three four months at least this one is very very late that's the newest leaf right yes and that's the second newest leaf if i can just hold it back here you can see kind of like how bumpy they are this is the other pond one they're so cute if you can't tell i am i'm very very emotionally attached to these plants for anyone who's successfully pollinated an anthurium before you probably i don't know hopefully can relate that to the first seed batch that you ever get like it doesn't matter how common the plants are it's always very special to you and i've been i've been nurturing these plants for i don't know a year and a half they're not huge but um they are definitely like now like exponentially sizing up so yeah so those are the six forgetty eyes before i put the mother plant back i just want to show you really quick because i don't know when the next time i'll show this plant is um for anyone who's looking to identify when it's a flower or if it's like gonna be a leaf. So on an anthurium, similar to a philodendron, when the plant is juvenile, the new leaves will come out of the petiole of the previous leaf. So on this seedling, the leaf is popping out of the petiole here. This is the newest leaf. The leaf is coming out of here. So anthuriums are kind of considered mature or flowering age when it's starting to grow leaves out of a caterpill. So you can see on this one, the mother plant, the newest leaf emerged out of this Caterpill, this little sheath here it didn't emerge out of the petiole of the previous leaf which would have been this one but you can see something is emerging out of the petiole so this would be a flower so this one is simultaneously putting out a leaf and a flower so if you want to start pollinating anthuriums just for fun I would highly suggest forgetii as a like as a beginner plant to like like experiment with because in my experience they flower at a very young age and they flower often like it just flowered maybe a month ago and then it's got this flower out and it's pushing out another inflow right now and another leaf i feel like this one is a little bit of a like a like a keener but i could say the same of pretty much all of my forgetty eyes they're constantly flowering okay enough about forgetty eyes the next ones i guess aren't as exciting um i chopped these off Oh, I just spilled it all over myself. I chopped these off in a video, like a repot video. These are Skindapsis Jade Satin Cuttings. Let me just take them out of the cup. They're still in water. What I'm going to do before I pass it off is I'm just going to wrap it in tissue paper, like around the roots, and then put it back into the cup because I don't know what they want to pot it in. I don't want to pot it in something they don't want to pot it in. And plus, like, I, I feel like this is intended... Well, I sold it as, like, a good way to start a full pot of Jade Satin because there's like a bunch of root cuttings already 
Um, I think at least one of them has an activated auxiliary bud. So you could, in theory, just kind of pot all the cuttings together in one pot and then over the next year you can see it grow into like a nice full basket. So these are five cuttings. Three of them are rooted, two of them are not. Not super exciting, I know. Next is a little baby of a philodendron SP Silver, SP Columbia, SP Silver. This came off of, um, this was a cutting, this was a cutting of a plant um, that I had put into my magic pond, which is just a vessel of like really dirty propagation water that I never changed. But that dirty propagation magic pond is responsible for rooting this monstera right here that would not root, would not grow a leaf for two years. And ever since it rooted in that dirty swamp, it's been growing nonstop. So I'm just saying, it's kind of magical. So this one rooted in that. It was a cutting that had activated three growth points. It water rooted and I just separated one of the growth points, the biggest one. And this one sold, I just sold this one for $5. It's just a little guy. It looks, it looks like it's wilty. It's not. It's just because it was growing in that magic pond, kind of like squished up. It has, has to straighten itself out. I don't know if it will, but um, this would be the newest leaf. And this one is just kind of like, it's perky. It's just kind of like wants to face down. So that one is freshly potted in pond. So I don't see any roots. It's been only a few days. Oh, this one. I forgot about this one. This one is... <clears throat> Uh, was sold to me or like imported as an Anthurium Angamarcanum F. Did I say that right? Angamarcanum F. So it kind of looks like it's very small, but it kind of looks similar to like Metallicum, um, like Kerma Lens. It's got that kind of long leaf, uh, subtle venation look. It's very small. This one has been not like a headache for me, but it's been really hard for me to size up. It's been a fairly um, steady grower but I keep forgetting about it so it would dry out and then um, that's what this is this is drying out so I sold it for a very cheap price and then hopefully it can thrive and grow big in the next owner's care because it definitely deserves better than me it had it's it was in my exo like my my waiting room exo where I put plants that I don't really know where to put and I just think it deserves better than that so I think this one has a potential to be a really nice plant. If, if it was me, I would probably repot it into like tree fern or pond and just give it some great white because I don't even think this one ever got great white. It's in soil. I'm very happy for him that he gets to leave my care and be with a better mom. Last one, I finally did it. I chopped the top off of my mandula. So this one was like growing above the pole. It was just kind of like dangling, like in midair. Didn't really have anywhere to go. That's so like, it's kind of like curving a little bit, but it was close enough to the light that it was growing quite compact. So I thought it looked really cute. I personally don't want this kind of variegation on a mandula. So I have a different mandula with a lot more like stripey, chunky, less speckly variegation. I still think this looks nice and it's got nice round leaves with a good size. It's not massive by any means, but it is a good size and it's pretty compact. So this is probably someone else's cup of tea. Don't get me wrong. I do think it's really nice, but it's not my favorite mandula. So it's still a goal of mine to grow a mandula really, really big. Like I don't need it to be like dinner plate size. It's probably not achievable for me. Like with a climbing kind of plant it's probably not within my capabilities, but my goal is to get like palm sized leaves. So, so it would be like the size of two of these leaves. That would be my goal. And I would rather put that effort into a specimen that has more, more of that um, sectoral stripey kind of grayish variegation where like where the green mixes with the white and just overall less of the speckle because I can appreciate that it's pretty, right? Don't get me wrong. It just kind of like, it's just too marble queeny for me. So this one was a fresh cut um, with like a big chunky aerial root and I potted in pond. In my experience, Mandula's really, really like pond and the, well, Epipremnum in general, in my experience, love pond. Skindapsis love pond, but they, they root really readily. So I'm, I wasn't super concerned about selling it as a fresh cut. Oh, one more plant, I forgot. This <laughs> Dean McDowell was a giveaway. I just like free 
free just take it for free this was a propagation that's been growing on my kitchen counter it's really reachy it's really leggy doesn't get a lot of light it's rooted pretty well in the pond but it definitely needs like better conditions and also this leaf got chopped <laughs> because i had this bin of plants on the floor because the kitchen counter was full and then my my boyfriend stepped on it so there was like a big like footprint on it like just torn torn leaf tissue so i just like chopped the end off so this is going to someone for free did i get everything now i think that's it so yeah as i said these plants are coming with us to northern tropicals because lauren has kindly allowed us to do our pickups there so i mean hopefully that will bring more people to the event as well she's also helping us like kind of broaden the pickup window so so anyone going to the event like throughout the weekend has the opportunity to pick up our perch plants there they're not confined to like the couple hours i'm going to be at the event but yeah sorry for a really 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 short video this week i really wanted to do repot but just like my hands are so it, i know they're just band-aids but when i tell you they are like they they're wrecked underneath underneath the band-aids there it's not it's not good so repop video will be for another day and next week will definitely be a much longer video with the pop-up event i'll probably do it in more like a vlog format of course charmaine and i are going together we're both going to be filming there kind of a bit prior to the event starting but probably i'll do some filming during the event as well and i'm very excited import season is here it's gonna be the first import of 2023 and of course i'm gonna continue to declutter plants throughout this year let me know if you are also decluttering plants or just decluttering your your house in general i don't know if there's something in the air or if just like me and charmaine just are on the same like cycle <laughs> mental cycle but we're so i when i tell you i am so focused on clearing things out like i'm i, I feel like 90 percent of my brain energy is going towards my house right now i just want to clean and i just want to purge all my spare time i'm just looking at furniture and i've been getting a lot of joy out of ending every day with my house like in a better state than it was at the start of the day it doesn't happen every single day but like that's my goal is for the house to be in a better state at the end of the day than it was the day before rather than kind of letting messes and things pile up throughout the week and doing one big clean i'm just doing a a, a little bit of clean every single evening nothing is allowed to just sit there and like fester for too long 2023 has been so much more mentally healthy for me compared to last year and i really want to kind of get a bit more depth in a future video but I feel like I owe you guys a bit of an explanation on like last year it, like to a certain extent because I was quite depressed for a lot of the year and I feel like that's all you guys know of me and I can tell you that like there's been a lot of good changes in my life and decluttering really has been a huge part of that but I in order to declutter properly I needed to get myself into a better mental space in the first place otherwise I was never motivated to do it so yeah cheers to spring cheers to spring comings cheers to spring cleaning cheers to decluttering cheers to import season starting if you're importing soon from equigenera equiflora let me know also what you're planning on getting and if you're decluttering let me know what you're getting rid of all right that's it for me so once again i'm sorry for the very short video but i'll see you next week with a really fun import video i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day i love you so much and i'll see you in the next one Mwah.